much. Um, I don't know if uh, it was by design or by luck of the draw, but having the nitrogen cycle after the carbon cycle actually makes a lot of sense because they are very interrelated. And if we think about improving or increasing soil or organic matter, increasing carbon, uh, it takes nitrogen also to do that. So this, the soil nitrogen cycle is important and interrelated with the, the carbon cycle, unless we're going to deposit carbon that's in the soil. All right. So this is a uh, very complicated, get this the right way here, nope, there we go, cycle as we've uh, heard already from other speakers and so we'll try to get through this uh, in some sense. I uh, just want to give you a little background on nitrogen in the soil before we uh, get on to the cycle itself. But nitrogen, just to remind everyone, is an essential plant nutrient. It's also essential for uh, animals and humans and plants. It's one of 17 nutrients required uh, by plants to grow and complete their life cycle, and it's a component of many organic uh, constituents in plants, uh, proteins, amino acids, DNA, and as uh, Lois mentioned, the, the green machine, it's a component of chlorophyll. So if we didn't have nitrogen, we wouldn't have those uh, green plants. Uh, this nitrogen is very abundant in nature. Uh, air is about 78% nitrogen, uh, not just N2 gases, but uh, that would be the predominant uh, form in uh, the atmosphere. And rocks uh, of the Earth's crust have 50x or 50 times more nitrogen than in the atmosphere. So what we have in the, the land side is a very large a resource of, of nitrogen. When we look at soils, uh, soils range considerably in their nitrogen uh, content. Uh, they'll range from say 6.06 to 0.3% nitrogen and, and the previous presenter talked about and showed some of the slides of the different soils and the, the soil classifications and how the organic matter change and, and that would have an influence uh, from low organic matter to actually high organic matter or organic soils. So on a pound per acre basis, maybe something like 1,200 to 6,000 pounds per acre. Uh, so we may wonder why do we worry about fertilization? Why don't we just plant cereal crops and have plenty of nitrogen available to them? Uh, but we know that a uh, majority of that nitrogen is not in a form that plants can take up. It has to be converted to uh, the plant available form. I'll talk about that in a minute. And on the slide here, I say that more than 90% of soil is in organic matter. It's actually most soils, it's probably even higher than that. And so we, we have a system where we retain uh, nitrogen soil predominantly in organic uh, forms and in our organic matter. And that, that, if we want it to be plant uptake and available for plants, has to be uh, converted to forms that plants can take up. So nitrogen is very reactive. Um, it's not like some essential elements like potassium. It's very non-reactive, doesn't change forms a lot. And so this reactivity makes nitrogen very complex. Uh, it's probably one of the reasons we're here today and still studying nitrogen and its uh, cycle because of this reactivity. So we can have organic forms, uh, or amino acids, proteins, and soils. You can have very complex molecules. It can be in various inorganic forms, gases like ammonia, N2, nitrous oxide, etc., and uh, in ionic forms, ammonium, nitrite, nitrate, and the plant available forms that the soils, uh, the plants take up from the soils are ammonium and and nitrate. And it's involved in very uh, broad base of chemical and biological transformations. And climate has a very large influence on both the chemical and biological transformations. So again, that interrelationship to the climate and climate change will have impacts on these transformations. So nitrogen is just a really complex uh, element and it does a lot of things. And that uh, is caused us to study it for a long time and we will continue to study it and it's very important uh, for both carbon and also for uh, management for a crop like corn. So I expanded a little bit from the topic of the soil nitrogen cycle to a little bit more of a overall nitrogen cycle. And you can see the complexity there. Uh, the kind of the bottom part of the diagram is the soil nitrogen component. But because we work in an open system, in other words, the soil is open to the atmosphere, the soil is, is open to drainage water going out of the soil, it, the soil nitrogen cycle is in a relationship with the overall nitrogen cycle. Uh, there's a relationship to what we do for management and crop production and influences both on what happens on the landscape and potential uh, losses. So I don't have time. Uh, this morning to go through all of these different components of the nitrogen cycle, but you can see that 
Uh, we have losses coming out, uh, going to the atmosphere, and, and part of the CAP project is measuring that. Um, we have potential losses going out with drainage water, and we have components to the CAP project that are looking at, say, nitrate losses in tile drainage. We have nitrogen inputs going in from livestock and from fertilizers, and those are components of the project. And you can see that we're very interrelated to many of these different parts of the uh, nitrogen cycle. So it is very complex, and what we do as far as management for crop production will have impacts on uh, how the nitrogen cycle uh, plays out, and it will also have an impact on potential losses and storage within the, within the soil and how we manage that system. So I just wanted to spend a couple minutes and go through a few of these processes. I'm not going to go through all of those, and just as a general, to make sure we're kind of on the same page of part of the, of the processes that we are looking at. So symbiotic fixation is the fixation of nitrogen gas from the atmosphere, either biologically through plants that are legumes, like soybeans, alfalfa, crops like that, or industrial fixation where we're taking nitrogen gas from the atmosphere creating anhydrous ammonia and other nitrogen fertilizers, and then we use those as, as inputs into the soil system. Obviously, corn is a cereal crop. It does not fix nitrogen like a, a, a legume-type crop will, so we are relying either on the soil system to supply nitrogen or we supplement that with fertilizer, and that's where the management of nitrogen fertilizers comes in because we do have a fairly large uh, requirement for corn for nitrogen, and we know that the soil <coughs> long-term cannot supply excuse me, all of that required nitrogen. And if the soil could do that, and we didn't replace nitrogen that the crop takes up, we would deplete the soil organic matter and we would have soils that are not very productive. So I like to think of our fertilization practices of not only influencing for that current crop, but we're also helping replenish a nitrogen that may be taken out of the soil system, and that is important for either maintenance or increase in soil organic matter. Uh, mineralization is a conversion of organic compounds to ammonium. So this is conversion of those, uh, not those non-plant available forms, organic forms, over to a form that plants can take up. Uh, conditions that favor uh, mineralization are the same things that really favor plant growth. So uh, warm temperatures, plenty of soil moisture, and we'll get more mineralization. And when we look at corn and we look at nitrogen fertilization requirement uh, during a growing season, when we have good growing seasons for high corn productivity, we also have good seasons for mineralization of organic forms to inorganic, and that helps with nitrogen supply to the crops. And soil organic matter is a very important source of plant available in. Uh, when we look at, uh, say, across the, the corn belt and the percentages of yield that is supplied by soil organic matter, it can range. 60 to 70 or plus percent of the yield would come from the soil organic supply. And of course, if we continue to do that over time, we deplete that down and our crop yields get very low, so we, we supplement that with our fertilization. Uh, immobilization is the opposite of mineralization. This is taking uh, inorganic nitrogen, converting it over to organic forms uh, that can either be recycled in the soil system or as the previous presenter talked about, going to really long-term uh, soil organic matter stocks and um, be retained within the soil system. And so from a plant perspective, as far as plant available nitrogen, immobilization is not good because it takes nitrogen that the plant could use uh, for its growth and production and puts it into microbial tissues or the soil organic matter. So it's a, it's a depleting process uh, for forms that plants could take up. Uh, nitrification is a microbial conversion of ammonium to nitrite and then on to nitrate. Um, again, this process helps supply the nitrate, which is a plant available form. Uh, plants can also take up ammonium, but the nitrification process um, moves nitrogen to a form that can be lost from the soil system. And I'll talk about leaching denitrification in a minute. It's unfortunate that nitrate is very, again, very reactive and it does not just sit in the soil. Uh, but can be um, converted to other forms and is uh, important in our loss potentials. And again, part of the CAP project is looking at those uh, conversions and the potential for losses. So it's a microbial process. So again, um, things that affect uh, microbial processes, soil moisture, soil temperature, enhance or decrease the rate of uh, nitrification. And I don't know if we have any uh, nitrification inhibitor work going on in the CAP project, but nitrification inhibitors are designed uh, to convert or stop the conversion of ammonium to nitrite. 
And with that stopping or slowing of that conversion, then we have more ammonium left in the soil that's held on the soil exchange complex and is not subject to losses uh, from the, the soil system. And then leaching is just a percolation of nitrate out of the soil system through uh, tile drainage or natural percolation through coarse textured soils. And again, that's a, a loss of nitrogen from, uh, from the uh, system. And nitrate that's leached both comes from soil derived and in fertilization. So we have to remember it's not just from the fertilizer uh, nitrogen we put in the soil. And the denitrification is the biological conversion of nitrate to N2 or nitrous oxide. Uh, it would be nice if the microbial system converted all the N2 gas and we wouldn't worry about it, I guess, as a greenhouse gas, but there's uh, either through nitrification or other processes it stops sometimes at N2O, uh, which causes us uh, the greenhouse gas issues. And I won't go into other details, but that is again, uh, mainly a biological conversion process. So in summary then, it's, uh, we're really working on a nitrogen cycle. Uh, one of our big challenges with this project and overall is understanding the in intricacies. I've hit on some of the highlights, but really the devil's in the details. And it's the details that we continue to work on with the nitrogen cycle and how it influences not only our fertilization practices for corn, but as this project is very important, is looking at the implications of the nitrogen cycle on and the processes in the nitrogen cycle on uh, the effects of greenhouse gas production and the overall, I think, nitrogen uh, cycle. The checkered flag has waved, so I think I'm at the end of the, the nitrogen cycle. Yep, we're there. <laughs>